Hello. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, today uh, I'm going to talk about a movie which is not at all what I mentioned the last video I made last year, um, which is The Warriors, obviously from the title, though this film uh, I was supposed to get uh, by the end of last year, but for some reason, something with the address was kind of like meh, just kind of... Uh, you know, it is just, just something was wrong. Don't know what. But as it was actually traveling to uh, where, where I live, it just... I guess something was wrong with the... I don't know. With the... Something with computers or something. I don't know what, but something went haywire and so it got canceled and had to reorder it and all that but anyway uh, the movie is Lenny um, Dustin Hoffman plays Lenny Bruce um, and it's about obviously his uh, the life of Lenny Bruce who you know obviously D Dustin Hoffman plays and uh, Valerie uh, Valerie uh, 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 plays a uh, uh, hot honey, honey, uh, <clears throat> uh, honey Bruce, uh, who's a uh, game his wife. They had a child together, and then they divorced. Um, and you know, it shows his rise as a stand up comedian as well as, uh, his drug addiction, as well as his various legal problems, especially uh, specifically when he was, you know, at, at the time when he was uh, on the rise, like in the fifties, sixties, and you know he was <clears throat> fairly controversial due to the fact that he was, you know, saying things that weren't really said at that point. You know, in the seventies, they'd be fairly more common, you know, like with people like Richard Pryor and uh, um, George Carlin probably would be two of the biggest, you know, stand-up comics at that point where, you know, uh, such language would be used, you know, very strong and even controversial things said. Um, but yeah, this is a very excellent film, really good, made by Bob Fosse. Um, I have talked about uh, all that jazz in the past. So I kind of want to do another video on that by, on its own. So I'll probably do that at some point, but it, yeah, because that will be 45 years old. And this is uh, 50 years old this year. It came out in 1974. Um, Al Pacino was actually offered uh, Lenny to play Lenny Bruce. Um, he turned it down, um, and he you know, did The Godfather Part Two. Um, he said that this film is like the only film he regrets uh, turning down throughout his entire career. So, you know, that's saying something, and then. Uh, Dustin Hoffman does an excellent job playing Lenny Bruce. Um, yeah, this is it's just a very good uh, release um, by Imprint Video. And uh, there is uh, this, like one of the original posters. And Honey was, uh, you know, like in a... <clears throat> Like an erotic dancer and stripper and such, and uh, he thought about you know they should do an act together where she would dance and you know he would also do comedy. Um, but you know this is a 
just a very well done film. You know, there, uh, it, throughout the film also there's interviews, you know, documentaries that are basically being made. So this interviewer who is actually Bob Fosse off camera, you never see him, but it's Bob Fosse's voice. He uh, is asking his ex ex wife because they get, they get divorced. You know, she had her own problems, like drugs and other things, and she eventually gets her life uh, basically as on track as possible. But then, of course, he then has his fall. All the while, you know, they're like trying to, you know, also raise their daughter. So they have uh, there's all that, but you know, so. She's interviewed. His mother is interviewed, and his uh, like his you know, like managers interviewed. Yeah, I believe it's his agent, agent or manager. I think a manager. Kind of just. I watched just a few days ago, and just to try to absorb everything. But something small like that is, you know. Either way, somebody who. But, would have a hand in representing him and help getting him gigs. And, um, you know, it is sad how, as the film goes on, you know, you see his rise and then just his fall, you know, you know with his legal problems, he kind of, for his stand-up routines, he kind of eventually just kind of stops doing actual jokes. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about these uh, certain legal problems and how ridiculous they are for this or that. And, the controversies and I was going to show you uh, the inside and yeah and here's the disc it's just like a the little the box that came in there you go him with a newspaper about uh, what he's talking about like, you know he would <clears throat> read certain things from a newspaper and comment and you used to like do jokes about that but then with things like that whatever would be on the news point out something like pro hypocrisies of things like you know this is hypocr hypocritical for this this and that and that and also would say it in a way where uh, aside from jokes being made it's just, it's just his delivery would be quite humorous but it goes as the film goes on it devolves to I'm going to talk to you about my legal problems and this and that. Can you believe that? It? It's like he just wants people to hear about not just himself and comedy, but just his legal problems. He just wants an audience for that. And obviously people aren't interested in that. You know, uh, when you go to see a stand-up comedian, you want to see them do stand-up. You want them to tell jokes. Um... And, you know, as, uh, it's just, uh, it's quite sad to see his, uh, fall, but, you know, obviously since it's inspired and based on a true story, um, though it is, a <clears throat> based off of a, a play that, uh, uh, that was on Broadway that, of course, is adapted into this film. I mean, for like six Academy Awards, Best Picture, Director, Adapted Screenplay, Actor, Actress, and um, I don't recall what the other award was for, but, you know, it didn't win any of them. Um, best Actor that year went to Art Carney, though, my opinion, I think uh, <clears throat> Al Pacino should have won for Godfather 2, though Jack Nicholson was really good in Chinatown. I think Hoffman would have been in third place for me. Not that it gets Art Carney or the film Harry and Tonto, but you know he, you know he had never been nominated for an Oscar before. Uh, Art Carney hadn't, and uh, this could be like the only time. Not only could he actually get acknowledged, but also potentially win. And so they gave it to him, despite Pacino and um, <clears throat> Nicholson being better. You know, I believe at the time people kind of thought that, but especially in retrospect, people were like, yeah, that shouldn't have happened. Harry Tato is a good film, but uh, deserving of best actor? I don't think so. Um, but yeah, um, very good film. I don't know if I haven't 
another imprint film. I might, um, but if uh, but if I do, it absolutely nothing like this. You know, the, which is one thing that's cool is this Blu-ray is uh, region free, so you know you can play this anywhere, even though it doesn't say anything on the back. Um, where uh, where you can find this and everything, it'll tell you that it's region free. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> I have seen more and more normal Blu-rays be region free, which is I think is nice. Not that every Blu-ray that has come out within the last year or so is, but I think it's nice, and I like how you know I like I like this the special features of Dead Neon, the many faces of Lenny Bruce on film, on Fosse Time editing Lenny, uh, interview with editor Allenheim. Might have been editing, which might have been the other Oscar this was nominated for, but um, the trailers from Hell, Robert Wade commentary on Lenny, and there's a, the other commentaries with his film historian, filmmaker Daniel Kremer, and um, filmmaker uh, Henry Jaglum, and. Uh, Yeah, trailers from hell. Rubber played uh, commentary on Lenny. Um, I didn't go through every single one, but the ones I did go through were pretty good. I don't believe that was actually um, actual commentary. I would have said so, but yeah, it has some. This is a very good release. Um, there was another release uh, by Twilight, but of course they usually have a very limited number and some of their special features are very s limited but you know I'm pretty sure the isolated music and effects track was there as well as the theatrical trailer but overall this is a very good uh, film this yeah so if you can find this somewhere probably online uh, I believe this is absolutely worth getting definitely uh, a really good film. I, uh, I put this with uh, my Blu-ray of Cabaret as well as the, my Criterion Collection Blu-ray and DVD of All That Jazz. And yeah, as I said before, I'll probably talk about All That Jazz again. Uh, giving it its own actual video because the only video I saw and I might have done a stream where I talked about it also, but being that it's the 45th anniversary, I think it, that film's good enough to actually warrant an actual discussion, again, for the anniversary as well as just how good it is. Um, so yeah, this was, that took, a, that was made like five years after this film happened, and well, the making of this film, as well as Bob Fosse doing a <clears throat> a musical, like Broadway musical at the time, you know, editing <clears throat> this film, and it absolutely was a very uh, strenuous time for Bob Fosse, so gave him the inspiration for making all that jazz, which is an excellent film, but it's also kind of unfortunate that a an incredibly stressful time and potentially deadly time inspired a, an excellent movie, but that happens sometimes, I guess. So, uh, yeah. Definitely an excellent film. And also, it is black and white if you haven't seen it. I know, you know, this is a color, but yeah, this film is in black and white. It isn't just you know, the back with Dustin Hoffman there. And he actually does look quite a bit like Lenny Bruce, which is really cool. And, you know, there's the poster, but... And in the inside area. 
really good film. I only say black and white because, you know, there are people who aren't fond of black and white movies. Yeah. I might talk about Cabaret also. Uh, <clears throat> pretty sure I haven't talked about that, but that's a fine film. I don't enjoy it as much as Lenny or all that jazz, but hey, you know what? Maybe in a few weeks or so, I'll talk about that. So, yeah, who knows? I, uh, yeah, I hope all of you are doing well. And hope this uh, was quite interesting if you've seen this film. If you have, just let me know what you think about it. Or if you haven't, maybe you'd be like, eh, maybe that sounds interesting. Or maybe not. But yeah. Anyway, uh, that's my overall thoughts on Lenny. Good film. Um, Liberty is taken. Well, of course, it's a film. <laughs> all liberties are taken to some extent, because perhaps sometimes the truth may not be all that interesting, or perhaps you may have to tone it down for film, or even on Broadway, especially in the time... That this that play was uh, made. So <clears throat> let me know what you think about this film, and uh, yeah, I shall uh, uh, be back to you uh, probably next week. So yeah, I will uh, talk to you all or see you all later. Hope you all are doing well. Hope your new year is going good. Hope your week has been good and uh, you'll have a great weekend. And I hope your day is uh, has been very good too. So all in all, hope you're all uh, get taking care of yourself. So uh, uh, again, uh, until next time, Please take care.